Now, in this video, I would like to help you gain a whole new perspective when it comes to consciously manifesting your goals, because I'm sure you fall into the category that is Neville describing here, where he says life is not a struggle, but most people perceive it as a struggle, right? They struggle with their current circumstances. They try to fight against their current circumstances. They try to change something in the outside world. But actually, you know, how it should be and what is an easier way to live is the art of surrendering, right? Surrendering to your ideal state, surrendering to your ideal identity, abandoning yourself in the reality of now having and being what you want to have and who you want to be, right? So instead of this outward direction, it's more like in dropping back and surrendering in the here and now into your desired state. And this brings a lot of ease, this brings a lot of peace to your manifestation journey. And I want to dive deep with you on that right now so that you can start surrendering more into your desire state instead of chasing them and trying to seek them and hope for them and wait for them, right? So I want you to think about the following question. What is the difference between someone who desires, so someone who walks around desiring, and someone who lives the life that they wanted? What is the difference? Right, very a very easy breakdown before we look more into the surrender topic here, the abandoning ourselves. Right. And again, surrendering, abandoning, I always like to compare it like a moth that flies into the flame for its desire to, to be as close as possible into the light. Eventually, you know, its desire for the light is so strong that it becomes one with the light. Right? It just surrenders to the flame basically becomes one with the flame and so do you have to become one with your desire state you have to be it you have to now see the world from it that is the real secret and i made a video on my channel also called the secret of the moth principle you find that on my channel so again coming back to this question difference between someone who desires and someone who lives the life that they wanted who manifested their goals well what we know is that someone who desires is thinking of there is separation, right? It would be nice if I have this. How could I not? Why, why couldn't I not have this? Why me? Why do I right now have these undesirable circumstances? I wish this could be like this. I want this. This would be great, right? Someone is walking around desiring. They're thinking of their desire, seeing it as something separate, and therefore it will never be expressed, right? The ones who seek never find. You don't get what you want. Because wanting is thinking of, you, but you don't get what you want, you get who you are. So that's living it, being it, thinking from it, right? Being one with the desired state. So someone who lives the life they wanted, they learned the art of, you know, being in their desired state so naturally that those states are expressed, that those unseen assumptions harden into fact, that those desires are manifested because they started to think from them and being it now and living their desires. So it is also what Neville said, stop desiring. Right now, you got a desire. Probably, I'm sure you watch this video. Um, either you want to learn more about how to change your life or you literally right now watching this video have one, two, three main desires. And now stop desiring. Be it right now. That's it, right? But of course, depending on which level you are on your evolution and on your level of, you know, evolving on this journey, um, it might need some more support through inner shifts and like internal movement to really stabilize in that new reality. But that was just very important for me to make clear that there is difference, right? Some people just walk around desiring and hoping for this and hoping for a better future and hoping for better circumstances. Not much will change. And there are those who actually live the life they want because they, 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 they express their desires, right? They are their desired states and they express them. They live from the end. So what do people who manifest their desires now have in common, right? Those who you know who successfully manifest, you have surely seen success interviews, success posts, success stories, um, all that stuff. But what do have, what do have the, the people, right, who manifest and who really kind of like understood how it works, what do they have in common? Well, they either consciously or unconsciously devote themselves to the wish fulfilled, either by imagining a scene, either by, you know, just having so much trust in themselves that they know they will get it that also that leads to like a natural relief and like self abandonment into the desired state but what they all do is they 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 find they found some way to be in the wish fulfilled state wittingly or unwittingly they devoted themselves to the wish fulfilled 
right? But what you probably try to do is you try to use willpower. You try to use effort. You try to use your rational mind to find a way, which will again, make, will make you feel exhausted, which will again, make you feel overwhelmed, which will again, keep you simply stuck because you don't manifest from the rational mind. You don't manifest from the mind, right? You manifest with awareness by placing your awareness on the wish fulfilled, by within your awareness, experiencing your wishes fulfilled, right? Imagining it as fulfilled, imagining yourself into who you want to be. And then that, that will be expressed, that will be externalized, that will be mirrored back to you where the inner man stands. But again, this video is about surrendering and abandoning ourselves into the state of the wish fulfilled. So I want to talk more about that. And maybe you know someone who has this attitude, right? I always get what I desire. I always get what I want. Of course I will get this. That, yeah, of course that will happen. Easy. That, yeah, I will manifest that. No worries about that, right? They're, they seem to be very, very confident. And I also acquired this kind of like bold attitude, more like lion attitude, not like sheep mentality. Oh, hopefully I get this. Oh, please, life, please. But more like this, where you understand yourself to be the upper in power. Um, for such a person, manifesting, consciously manifesting goals will seem more easy. Right, because they have this trust, they have this knowing, they have this, they have understood how things work. So now the question is, how can you become such a person? Right? How can you manifest your goals with ease? How can we manifest our goals with ease? Because that is what we all want. Every one of us in the manifestation space, what we want is we have desires, we have a dream life, we have this dream version of ourselves, and we don't want to struggle, we want to manifest it with as much as ease as possible along the way. With, of course, understanding that once we occupy a certain state, we don't have much to influence based on the like impulses we get or based on how externally we move through the bridge. So we will move through certain things and actions and do them, but we still want to not feel like we're struggling and fighting and working hard for our manifestation and it taking a very long time, right? So we want this with ease. And the key word... The keyword I can literally tell you, and I've observed also members of my program really adopting that mindset and it literally helped them very quickly. The keyword here is surrender, right? Self-abandonment into the desired state. Surrendering to it as though it is the only option. There is nothing else. That is, I burn all my bridges. That's now my state. I surrender. I fully give myself to that desired state. I have nothing to lose. That's my desired state. Right? Not trying to get not trying to convince the rational mind, this constant trying to get, trying to do more techniques. What that does is it tells the mirror that you are not it yet. Get this, please understand this, right? The mirror, patiently waiting, not to be fought against, not to be hated, not to be ignored, not to be destroyed. It's a, it's a confirming mirror. So cool, that's how it is. It's more like an inner game, right? Like Lemon said, the game of life more so takes place on the highways of the inner world. So we reposition ourselves within, within consciousness, we dwell somewhere new within, and then that is like externalized and mirrored back to us. But if you're constantly in this rut of trying to get it, doing more techniques, then also on the outside, trying to do more to get your manifestation, what is that indicating to the mirror? It's indicating that you are not it. Only once you are it, only once you are in the desired state, only once you gave yourself the wish fulfilled, then consciousness will basically start to work basically in your favor and will start to externalize these inner states. But if the mirror sees you're trying to get it, but you're not having it, you're trying more to get it, but you're not actually having it, what do you expect to get reflected back? It will be probably more trying and not having it. So we have to fully be it. More on that later. So the right attitude and actually the solution to, you know, manifesting a goals with ease is not imagining your desire to get it, but to enjoy here and now the wish fulfilled. That is true surrender. That is true surrender. And it took me actually quite a while to really get this. But once I adopted that, once I applied that, I saw that it works. Like I saw that this is true. So what do I mean by that? Right? Not a matching desire, not a matching to get your desire. And you will say, wait, Nicholas, of course I want to get my desire. Of course I want to get my manifestation. Yes. But understand this, right? Of course, we want to experience things in the flesh. Of course, we want to experience things in the manifested world. Of course, that's why we learn more about conscious manifestation to consciously bring forth our desired circumstances. So that's true. 
But if you apply these manifestation methods, if you if you go in your inner reality to get something, you again encounter the following problem, which is that your mirror of life will think that you are not having it yet. It thinks you're just on the inside trying to get there, trying to get there, trying to get there. So it can't reflect back the end result. If, however, you get into the mindset of imagining your, your wish as fulfilled, but not to get it in the future, but to simply in the here and now, fully being in the wish fulfilled, you're not expecting something from the future because you understand that there is no future. There is only the here and now. The future is a mental construct. You project things in the future and say, hopefully that happens soon. Hopefully that happens soon. That is what keeps the manifestation away. But if you, instead of imagine simply for the sake of enjoying in the here and now that wish fulfilled, enjoying that congratulation, enjoying that visualization, enjoying that giving thanks to having received your desire. I remember when I, I remember when these were just desires. I remember when I tried so hard to get this. Everything that helps you to in the here now dwell on the wish fulfilled, that is surrendering in the here now to the desire state. And then the mirror of life, right? Is like, oh, now you are actually being it. Well, okay, now I, I show you that, that you are. Now I show you that you just experienced the wish fulfilled. Now I show you that it is already done. Now I reflect it back for you. Now I confirm that you fully got it within, that it's fully done for you within. You get the point? So let us continue here. Why is it difficult for people to manifest desires that are more important than other desires? Right? It's also a big question, and I'm sure most of you guys watching this, you've encountered this, where, you know, you manifested A, B, and C with ease, but then when it comes to D, to this one desire, you feel, that, wow, this is this is more difficult, this is more challenging, this is more emotional, this is more, I feel like I need to do more here for this one life area. Because when it comes to some desires, there is no resistance or trying to get it attitude, right? You just have uh, automatic confidence, you just don't force something. You don't try to get it. You naturally say, yeah, we'll get this. Or you experience this as done. But then there are no doubts because um, because there's not much like resistance. right? And you're not trying to, to force something. right? Because there is an automatic surrender to that wish fulfilled. You automatically have this one desire for going on that vacation or meeting this friend or getting this car. And you decide that. You imagine that. You surrender to that without interfering really much um, with that. But then you have desires where you think, oh, for them, the whole the whole game changes. Or for those desires, I need to apply something else. Or for those desires, I need to work more. But you're also not, for those desires, surrendering. You're, you're not practicing surrender for those desires. For those desires, you think, oh my God, they're more important. And then you go into the trying and seeking and forcing it and using more effort mode. And then also for those seemingly more important desires, uh, instead of, also there, surrendering and practicing the auto-surrendering there and diving into the wish fulfilled without expecting a future. That future change will come automatically. Don't worry. But you should in the here and now be absorbed in the wish fulfilled so that the desire dies. The goal is that the desire dies and that we start having it, being it naturally. Then there is no more desire. Right? Shifting into the state where we are the desire, where it is already so, then on the, in that state there is no more a desire left. And this can also happen through surrendering, also for the seemingly more important desires, right? So give up your expectation and simply imagine to be it now. That is a big problem, right? You, your expectation, your constant need for looking in the 3D or has something changed yet? Is there a sign? Am I doing it right? Am I on the right track? And all of that pressure and constantly self-judging, self-blaming yourself. Oh, it's not here yet. I'm doing something wrong. I have to do more techniques. Trust me, this gets you in a very dark seemingly never-ending downward spiral, right? So give up that expectation of the future and understand that awareness only knows the now, creation is finished, and you can now, through your imagination, which allows you to go above your senses, right? What we coined imagination, by the way, for those of you who have not figured that out yet, what we coined imagination means simply experiencing things that are not seen yet, but they're still real, they're still in existence. We're just so unused to that. It's so untrained, it's so overlooked because we're so like lured in, more interested by the sense world, totally forgetting this objective world of imagination, right? In which we can experience everything. You could now experience that you bungee jump. You could now experience that you're flying in a plane. You could now experience that you're standing on a beach. You could now experience that you drive your dream car. That is all in existence already, right? So 
Give up that expectation of getting something in the future and focus on being it in the here now. Experiencing that wish fulfilled for the sake of now getting the wish fulfilled because you understand that the manifestation does not equal the wish fulfilled. I'll let it sink in for one second. The manifestation externally, new circumstances, does not equal the wish fulfilled. It's not that when a manifestation comes, now your wish is fulfilled. No, the manifestation can only come because your wish was already fulfilled within. The manifestation is the confirmation, the consequence of that internal wish fulfilled that you already gave yourself. Like Neville said, the world only gives you what you first give yourself within. So it's not that when the manifestation happens, ah, finally my wish is fulfilled. That is never how it works. You will wait forever. You first have to fulfill the wish inside by surrendering to the wish fulfilled in the here and now. That's it. It's done. And you will no longer even look for result. Look for when it happens. Look, wait. You cannot wait because it just happened. That was the wish fulfilled inside, in the unseen reality, in, within consciousness. And consciousness is the only reality, wherever you dwell within right now. I am it right now. Right? So manifestation does not require willpower or force. We only have to apply willpower or force when we are in the 3D trying to make something happen, trying to make something happen. But in the 3D, we can't make something happen. Everything we make happen happens in the non-physical and then that is expressed in the 3D. The more we lose ourselves in the 3D, the more we toil and struggle and try to escape our current state. And because we, for we forgot that it's our own created prison walls. So instead, zoom out, I am remembering in my house or infinite mansions, in my father's house or these infinite rooms within your consciousness, there are these infinite states and possibilities and then selecting and choosing and within already being in the wish fulfilled, right? And planting seeds in the non-physical and, and imagining and being that desired self of you. And then that is slowly basically trickling down in the 3D. So here's some quotes that I want to bring up that also highlight this importance of surrendering, not using effort and willpower, more using non-effort and relaxation and dropping into the wish fulfilled. So the clue to the real purpose of life is to surrender yourself to your ideal with, with such awareness of its reality that you begin to live the life of the ideal and no longer your own life as it was prior to this surrender, right? Fully abandoning yourself to the ideal. Fully surrendering yourself to this ideal self, to the desired state. So prayer is to be contrasted with an act of will. So that's what people think, right? Pray, begging, hoping, trying to make something happen, seeking. But prayer is surrender. It means abandoning oneself to the feeling of the wish fulfilled. If prayer brings no response, there is something wrong with the prayer. Right? So prayer means not begging and hoping. Prayer is simply recognizing yourself to already be who you want to be right i have also a video on my channel um if you go to the search bar to the search icon and you type in prayer i have a deep dive video on prayer what it means how it works how to do it um and the fault lies generally in too much effort right so and i also see this that too many people they use too much effort too much willpower too much force and then they wonder why they feel exhausted then they wonder why the manifestation is not showing up then they wonder why they give up but then they wonder why it seems so difficult because they're not simply surrendering to their ideal in the here now. So when the desire is upon you, that is the time to accept your wish in its fullness. I love this so much. The desire comes up, that is already the moment where you can understand, wait, I can only desire that because it does exist. And we talk about that in a second. Um, I can only desire that because you know that is possible for me. So I can accept, I can say thank you already. When you get a desire, you can already say thank you because for every desire, there exists basically the, the, the opposite state, basically the fulfilled desire automatically exists because whatever you can desire, you can also experience that as fulfilled. So when a desire comes up, you can immediately give thanks for that it is actually already done, that it does that the wish fulfillment therefore does also already exist. You can never desire for something that is, you know, where not the wish fulfilled state is also present within creation. So the minute desire comes upon you, assume it is already a fact. Do not wait for anything to come to pass. Accept it now as though it were, and then see what happens, like I explained earlier. But the big question, and I talked about this in previous videos, but I want to bring this up again because this is really important, is 
how do you perceive your desires? Because now we talk about surrendering and we have to, you know, approach it with ease and relaxation and not effort and more techniques. But how do you perceive your desires? Because if you, if you perceive your desire as something that you need to work towards, that you need to work hard for, if you perceive your desires as something that seems unattainable, far away or is complicated, or if you see your desires as something that is there to let you suffer, that you feel lack because you desire something, desiring is bad. If you start from the beginning on to perceive your desires like that, well, it will, you can't surrender, right? It will always seem like something to work for, something outside of you, something complicated. But surrendering to the desire state will be very easy when you understand that your desires are something that is already available here now. Something that you simply reveal and make tangible and make visible by starting to internally subjectively identifying with now having achieved it, with now being it. So if you change the way you perceive your desires, when they come up, you will automatically understand, wow, that's something I can surrender to because that's something that's available to me. That's something that only comes up for me because I can achieve it. Right? So you can only desire something that is already existing. It is already available within you as a potential state to be occupied. Your desires are nothing that you have to strive towards on the outside and, and, and look for it. And, oh, I desire now this money. Let me, let me seek the person who will give me the money. Let me seek the opportunity. Let me try in this world to get it. No, right? It's not something that you need to earn yourself, that you have to reach or that, that is separate from you. Your desire is your currently hidden identity, right? A currently non-occupied state. That is what a desire is. You desire the car, you can only desire the car because you can also also imagine that you have the car and fulfill that wish within yourself. So that means that the wish fulfilled exists. So whatever desire you have right now, that wish fulfilled state exists. But it's probably right now not occupied because if you occupy the state of having what you want to have, being who you want to be, then you no longer desire it because then you have it within and then it will be reflected. Right? So your desire is your current hidden identity. It's like unrevealed it's like in the existing in the unseen and you're going to reveal it by embodying that identity by seeing the world through the lens of that identity by imaginatively um, fusing with that identity imagining something that implies that you are that desired identity and that will make you be identified with it so your desires are already part of you otherwise you could not desire it so basically what desires are, and that's also a very, very helpful perspective to see them, and that's actually the, the truth of what your desires are, um, those are invitations for new experiences, right? No one in this world is just stuck. No one in this world, or let me rephrase that, no one in this world is just on the same level all the time. Because at one point, there might be problems, there might be dissatisfying circumstances, there might be triggers, and then we want to go and change it. And that is, that is the cause for movement. That is the cause why people change their lives. That is the cause why, you know, there's always movement in this world because it's the continuous appeasement of hunger. It's a continuous, you know, internal movement. And now I assume this and then this happens. And now I really want to travel. So, okay, I, you know, assume that I will like, have a great tr year of travel this year. And then I start to book flights and actually travel there, right? It's all desires that come up that will bring you to, to next levels of consciousness. And then on those levels, you will have new desires. Right? But your desire is nothing you lack. You can surrender to it because it exists. The question whether your desire is possible or not also falls naturally away since you can already imagine it. Right? Oh, Nicholas, I really would like to, to, to 3x my income, but I don't know if it's possible. You know, I, I've never, ne no one in my family did it. I've not seen a success story online where, you know, someone tripled their income actually, but I really want it. Well, the fact that you desire it the fact that you can therefore also imagine what it would be like if your income is tripled, what that would imply, what would change in your life, therefore, means that also this is achievable for you. So there's nothing to fight for when everything you will ever desire is already within creation, within consciousness, within you. How do you want to fight for something? Why should you suffer for something if every state is within you? It, this only like becomes relevant, like suffering for something, working hard for something in a sense or needing extreme amounts of willpower and discipline i would say it's only happening when we lose us in the 3d world and try to get something here and try to get something here forgetting that we're only operating 
on a certain level of consciousness that we're only operating from a certain state. So instead of zooming out, right, we, we, we just lose ourselves in that toil and struggle. But what we should do is we should zoom out, align with the state where we have fully achieved what we want to achieve. And then that state carries all the means necessary in it to express itself. So every action we that is needed, we will automatically do it. Every pe person that needs to come into our life to confirm that we are now who we said we are within will come into our life, right? But there's nothing to fight for when you really understand this. So stop asking yourself whether you are worthy or unworthy to receive that which you desire, right? I hear this question often. So I don't know if I'm worthy of that relationship. I don't know if I'm worthy of that much money. I don't know if I'm worthy of having, you know, good communication or people who treat me well. I don't feel that I'm worthy of that. You as man, as woman, you as the limited self, right? You did not create the desire. Your desires are fashioned within you because of what you are now claim yourself to be. So every state comes with a new desire. Let's just say right now you want the relationship. Once you shift into the state of having the relationship, on that level, you will have other desires in life. Maybe you want then a house with that person. Maybe you want to travel with that person. You'll always get new desires based on the current level of consciousness that you're at. It's, it's like, and I think that is why Neville gave the ladder exercise, by the way. It's like climbing ladders, it's climbing levels of consciousness. You're now on the present level of consciousness with your current circumstances. Now there are one or two things you dislike. Then you climb internally to the next level of consciousness and then that is expressed. But then that this comes potentially also with other new desires. Right? That's the game of life, the continuous appeasement of new arising hunger, sometimes more, sometimes less. But stop asking yourself whether you're worthy or unworthy because the fact alone that you have the desire means it exists. Remember who you are. You are that awareness. You are that I am. Right? You are not only that limited self. We are basically playing on two levels, on the human limited level, but also on the awareness every state exists, every potential exists level. But if you ask yourself, am I, am I worthy because of my history, you, for, you lost yourself in your state. When you zoom out and understand, wait, my desire state is there, you can boldly shift into that and know that you're worthy of every desire that you have. Just of who you are, just because of the understanding that every desire state does already fully exist in you, in its fullness. So to desire a state is to have it. Right? Whatever state you can desire means that this state is in existence. Otherwise, how could you desire for it? And that is very freeing very relaxing to know. And then we can surrender to that state. We don't need to fight for it, use more techniques, use more effort. No, we have the desire. Okay, what would I experience that would imply to me that it is done? Well, this friend would say this to me or this family member would congratulate me or I would do this differently in my life. I would experience this. I would say this to myself in front of the mirror. I would hold this in my hand. I would do this. Let me relax and imagine it and be in the wish fulfilled here now. Not, not, not secretly trying to make something happen in my outside world, not, not just manipulating my inner world and then still being in the waiting mode and looking around when it's happening. No, I surrender in the here now to the wish fulfilled and I open my eyes from that and there's nothing left to be done because that was the wish fulfilled. And when the desire comes up again, I go back and surrender again to the wish fulfilled. Universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself, everything that you want, you already are. You already are that which you want to be. Only your refusal to believe it, only because it is not natural to you, you're not seeing it because you're not having aligned with it yet. But every hidden identity, every version of you um, is already in existence. So our job is not to, in a sense, create um, possibilities. Our job is more so to align with already existing states, which are then expressed. And then we call it, oh, yeah, that's created. I created it. But actually, we didn't create it. Subjectively, we can say, okay, we created a new circumstance because we manifested this, we imagined this car. And then, you know, it is manifested after some weeks or months. And then we say, oh, I created this in my life, having this. I created it. Subjectively, that makes sense. But actually, you did not create it. You imagined something that existed, identified with it, made it natural, and then that was expressed. And you surrender to now being it. And then the mirror of life was like, oh, that's what you gave yourself within. Here you go. Here's the confirmation. That's what you are. That's who you are. That's what you claimed yourself to be in surrender, in abandoning yourself. Right? So I do assume, I don't hope, I do assume that this video helped you gain more ease when it comes to how you see your desires and how to approach manifesting them, that you start more, you know, going 
leaning to the side of surrendering and not pushing, forcing, willpower, trying more, but more surrendering to be it right now. Let me know in the comments how you like that and what your insights are. Leave a like on this video so that more like that YouTube automatically spreads this message. More people learn about these principles. More people learn about Neville's teachings and free themselves, find more, more peace, find more self-empowerment and, you know, help them, help people around them. And if you need more resources, you can check out my free masterclass. That's the first link. And if at some point you say, this makes sense, you want support, you want a step-by-step -step program in a systematic way, you want a community, you want to hang out with me, you want to talk with me, you want to chat with me, you want to be in my program that I have for years that has been proven to get successes again and again and again just because of the breakdowns in there and the strong community that we've built over the years with more than 350, 370 people right now. Um, I invite you to join our program and I speak to you in the next video. Bye guys. And don't forget, surrender in the here and now. You are right now. Feel the relief. Feel the relief of being your desired self right now. Surrender to it. Practice that. It's really important. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.